In this video, I'll be showing you how to set up the Safari Vista Generation 3. So let's see what's in the bag. We've got tree wraps, a large rain fly, internal insect mesh, set of poles, ratchets and straps, the user manual, a bag of spares, including a spare pole section, tear aid, just in case you get a hole in your rain fly, three water gates that can go on the D-rings, um, a couple of zipper pulls, just in case one breaks, and some hooks. There's the tent floor and bungee and pegs. First thing we've got to do is lay the floor out so the corners are pointing towards the three anchoring trees that we're going to use. So I'm gonna take a tree wrap first and I'm gonna put it around my tree at the height that I wanna do it on. So that's the tree wrap. Then you take your strap, go to the end with the loop and then put the tail through the loop, pulling it through and pointing it towards the tent and we do the same to the other two trees. So we have the floor, unclip the bracelet and put that back in the bag. The tail will be the first D-ring that you see so just point that towards the, te uh, the tree you're going to use for one of the ends. Um, you just need to make sure that it's the right way facing up, which means that you should see the seat belt around the edge on the upside, and the underside will have the storage nets attached, uh, which are detachable, uh, but also the underfloor strap system and sleeves. So there's a good distinction between the top and the bottom of the floor mat. You take one of your ratchets, which has a large loop on the end, and just flip the pole socket out of the way, feed the loop through the D-ring, and then the ratchet through the loop, cinch tight, and do that to every corner. Once you've got your strap around the tree, take it to the ratchet that's attached to the tent, slip it through the spindle, and then pull out the excess strap, giving it a couple of cranks so it doesn't slip out on you and then we'll go and eyeball the others before we get it completely right. So you thread the strap through the spindle of the ratchet, take out that end, then you can drop the ratchet and walk back, taking out the slack and lifting the unit as we go. And we're look looking for a straight line between this strap and the underfloor strap, which you can see is underneath these three seams. So that's a pretty good line we've got there. We might need to take it a little bit this way just to straighten it out, but for a first go, it's not bad. It's pretty bang on. Once we've got the floor in tension, uh, it's time to put the, the poles on. Uh, three um, 13 millimeter diameter poles of aluminium with um, elasticated in turn so they snap together really easily and just lay those up onto the floor. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take each pole and lay it along the line of the underfloor straps and fit it into the pole socket in the corner of the floor. So I've got one there I'm going to put this one to the back and go and put it in the socket in a sec. And then this one will start over here in this pole socket. Now this is just going to be rough because everything's going to change as we throw on the rain fly. Uh, so now it's time to fit the Safari Vista rain fly, which is a big piece of kit, um, 8,000 hydrostatic head and um, going to be big enough to cover this and give us some really huge porches. So unclip the belt, 
unfold it. And then what you're looking for, this is the center point where all the seams come together. And each corner will have a set of two adjuster straps with C-clip buckles um, on a quick release. And we're going to take those C-clips, we're going to attach them simply to the handle of the ratchets. Then I'm going to throw the rest of the rain flight over the floor and do the same on all three corners. Now I'm going to do the second corner. And clip that into position. And then pull the rest of the rain flight over to the far corner. And then clip those last two C-clips onto the ratchet handle. I'm going to leave these straps quite long for the moment. We can tighten them back up once the poles are in position, but for now it's good to have um, a bit of play in here because we're about to fit the poles. While maintaining pressure backwards so that the pole doesn't jump out of its socket, I'm now going to bend the pole sideways, find its corresponding um, pole pocket, which is this green piece of fabric, and fit the end into that. And then I'm going to do the same over here. Get the pole that again has jumped out while I've been pulling on the rain cover, put it into the socket, make sure that there's pressure forcing it into the socket while I go over to the other end. I'm pushing it. I'm going to bend the pole sideways and fit that pole into its corresponding socket. And then last one, here's the pole. Again, fit it in across to the other side. Give it a push to make sure it's in that pole socket. Bend it back, back bend it sideways. Fit it into the corresponding socket there. So now we have three curved poles, which now have to be lifted into that central position. So I'm going to come in through this hatch now. And I can see the three curved poles. So I start to lift one, two, three and they should all intersect at the same point that all the segments of the rain fly come together and then there's a tie in the top and a lantern hook but we can leave the lantern hook alone um, use the ties to bring those poles together in one point and secure them then there are three C-clips on the longer sections of pole, which we're just going to put in place. So now we've got these, uh, this big dome and these three flappy side wings. I'm going to roll this one up just to show you how that works. Because there's a really simple toggle and loop system on the underside and the outer side which fix that roll in position. Um, now I'm going to peg out those wings. But before we do that, to stop it flapping around, the poles are now in position. We can now um, tighten the, the rain flight. So now, as I've said, we can, all, we can roll these up and toggle them and fix them on all sides to get uh, give us a great view, give us good ventilation through, and give us a nice covered uh, hangout area. Um, I, I would suggest that you roll it backwards like that instead of forwards like that, because if it does rain, if, you, if you've rolled it outwards, the rain will collect in here. If you've rolled it backwards, uh, the rain will always just drop off, but we're gonna peg this one out. Um, at each end, you'll see that there's a gray webbing loop, a hook, a bungeed loop 
with another hook on it. Today I've got the bungee that comes with the pegs. I've put a loop in there and that simply hooks onto that as a quick release feature. And then I'm going to take out that bungee. Another loop I've made on the other end, hold that to the floor and screw into that loop. If you, if you keep your elastic up here, what you'll find is you'll just end up with a complete mess as you're twisting it. So also it puts undue pressure on, on the peg. So you wanna keep that loop down and screw into the ground as far as you can go. Now the floor's up, the rain flies on, we're gonna put in the insect mesh. So I'm going to spread it out on the floor like this. And what we're looking for are the corners, which will look like a clip buckle. And these come and just clip inside the pole on the underside next to the D-rings in each corner and cinch it tight. The best thing to do is run your hand down one of the seams so you don't get um, confused that it's and, and end up with it inside out. Once you've got it um, spread out, what you'll see is there's a yellow C-clip right in the middle of the insect mesh, which is going to go up to the center point where the poles cross. So that yellow C-clip and all the other C-clips should be obviously on the top side of the insect mesh. Otherwise, if they're on the underside, you've got it inside out. So I'm going to follow this seam along to the next corner, clip that one in place, and do the same to the third corner. When all three corners are clipped in, I'm going to open one of the doors so that I don't rip the mesh while getting up. Jump up onto the tent. Take the C-clip on the yellow webbing and fit that to the center point. And then run my fingers down all the seams, attaching any C-clips that you that find corresponding with the C-clips from the rainfly, put them on the outside of the existing C-clips so that they don't pull up, they're just fixed in that position. As I go along the rim, you'll see that there are a number of buckles hanging loose and they will correspond to elasticated clips on the other side and you just have to bring those together under the tent, cinch it tight, then the next one. So basically there's two for each corner. Once all the elasticated um, straps have been clipped together, you can fold those in if you want to keep it tidy, um, keep them up there. Then there are a couple of hooks and toggles that you can bring together there and do the zip up the rest of the way. So now the insect mesh is up. We've got a fully enclosed insect proof bedroom inside, a 8,000 hydrostatic head rain fly on top, which can be pegged out, rolled up, access on every side through zip entrances and a fourth access point in the middle of the tent underneath here and of course under here you have 172 square feet of covered dry living space.